Right, 15 April 2024, and today I'm going to be giving you this week's first update. And as you can see, we've been very busy over the past week. We've introduced more regular updates on a daily basis. And today I want to give you an update on all the stories that are leading uh, in Zimbabwe. So let's start with what's happening in the CCC. And this massive development is coming because of the dialogue that has started between ZANU-PF and the CCC. And we now have clarity on the thinking of Nelson Chamisa and what he's thinking about the actual dialogue that is taking place. Uh, and obviously Chamisa has not said anything himself, but people that are working close to Chamisa, like Prince Dubekos Banda, has came out with a tweet this weekend. And it's now clear that Chamisa is not going to be working with any of the CCC factions. So any of the guys that are in CCC are not going to be working with Chamisa. And Chamisa still wants a dialogue between himself and ZANU-PF and Mnangab. So you can see that Prince uh, Dubeko here uh, says, after the exit of President Chamisa, CCC now has two factions in parliament. Both of them are reporting to ZANU-PF. And that is one faction reports to Ziambi Ziambi, while the other faction reports to Jacob Mdenda. Effectively, Pali is now made up of ZANU-PF official factions only. We need fresh elections. So if you are looking at all the guys that are working with uh, Promise Mkwananzi and the guys that are working with Washman Ngube and Sengizu Chabangu, they have all been rejected by Nelson Chamisa. I did ask Provis Mkwananzi yesterday if he accepts what is being said here. And unfortunately, <laughs> Provis Mkwananzi was not able to give an answer. Uh, it's clear why. Uh, he's obviously not happy with uh, this pronouncement by Dubekos Banda that he is a ZANU-PF proxy. And this is something that has been said a long time, for a long time, that none of the CCC factions in parliament are actually uh, real political opposition, but they're actually working with ZANU-PF. And also given the fact that Mnangagwa is going to give 80 new vehicles from his own pocket to, to these MPs, it's clear that uh, Chamisa will not be able to work with them. And it's very sad. Uh, opposition in Zimbabwe is now a mess. Now let's go to Chamisa's tweet. Chamisa has tweeted, and he says, think it before uh, to become it. Whatever you wish to become, just think it and act it. Then watch and work it to manifest. Uh, thought is the first act. Your thoughts and actions become your reality. Blessed weekend. That is Nelson Chamisa. And then another tweet that he put out this weekend. Uh, and let me remove the banner here. It says, from the bread of adversity to the bread of increase, the table of two breads. We are going through a rough patch, but it's the pathway to our blessed, prosperous, and glorious future. All this current nonsense shall disappear. Common sense shall be common everywhere. All this begging shall go away. We shall be a leading and leading nation, a lending nation. Plenty is our portion. Zimbabwe shall be fruitful again. Revival is coming. Isaiah 30, 20 to 23, receive the Sabbath blessings. So these are the tweets from Nelson Chamisa. And Chamisa is extremely popular. Uh, there is nothing that you can do in the political uh, landscape of Zimbabwe without Nelson Chamisa. And as I said, Chamisa has rejected uh, the CCC factions. That is the one that is led by Promise Mkwananzi, uh, the one that has got Timber, the one that has got Washman Ngube, and all these factions. He's saying that they're not working with him. And this was said through Prince Dwekos Banda, who is very close to the Chamisa group, uh, which is currently working on the Blue Movement. And he's accusing these groups of working with Ziambi Ziambi and Jacob Mudenda. So you are clear, if you're a CCC supporter, if you're a Chamisa supporter, you must know that Chamisa is not working with these groups. Uh, they're not his, uh, his, his group. Sorry, apologies about that. They're not his groups. They are just people that are claiming, but they're not working with uh, Nelson Chamisa. So I guess that's clear. Let's go to the next story, which is Oxilium Nangagwa. So Oxilia Mnangagwa is on a massive campaign for her sons. So she wants one of the sons to take over as president. And they want to outdo and uh, outmaneuver uh, General Chwenga. So as you can see, this was the a meeting in Victoria Falls yesterday. Uh, and this is to do with the youngest people in our country. She is pushing uh, a lot of rallies among youths 
So you can see that they were uh, doing what are called junior councils here. Yeah? All the, uh, the national junior councils came around and they were addressed by Oxlam Nangagwa. Uh, there were also international organizations uh, from other junior councils and Zimbabwe, the leadership of the junior councils in Zimbabwe. So what Oxlam Nangagwa is doing is she is creating a platform among the youths, among the women, among uh, uh, universities. She's going all over campaigning for sons. And my understanding is that she's pushing for either Collins or for uh, Junior, Emerson Junior, to become the president. But Kuda is also a minister of finance. So the whole family is being pushed or, or being prepared to take over from ED when he finally leaves. So these guys, even if Mnangabwa is going to be leaving, they are also trying to push the, the sons to go into office, not to give it to uh, who is supposed to take it, who is General Chuenga. So I don't know how that is going to work, but this is the current situation. Then let's move to lithium smuggling. There's ma massive li lithium smuggling in Mutare. Uh, in fact, the amount of smuggling is such that currently there are seven court cases uh, behind the, before the courts of smuggling of lithium. Zimbabwe is not getting anything from the lithium mines. All that lithium is just going out. Uh, to Mozambique, passing through Mozambique, the Chinese are exporting it without paying anything to Zimbabwe, and there's no actual benefit for the Zimbabweans which is taking place uh, from the lithium mining. So when you talk about Kama TV and all that mining that is taking place, they're just shipping it out and leaving without uh, leaving thing, anything in the country. And then in terms of chiefs, 250 chiefs have been trained to officiate at marriages, so you can now get married at your chief as well and you can now uh, do inheritance so the inheritance laws are now in the hands of the chiefs that is what Minangabwa has done and then in terms of uh, what has happened with uh, let's let's look at the, the next story here and this is to do with uh, I, I want to, to find a, a better story here. Zimbabwe consultation mining company uh, ZMDC has managed to resolve the dispute in Mutare so you remember that there's a dispute taking place for 1.2 million at Marange, at Jadzwa. So they were over there uh, this weekend. I think Sugar Chagonda and uh, this lady here, they are from ZMDC, the vice chairperson, which is Clara Sadumba. They've managed to sort out the dispute at uh, Chiazwa. And the Marange family is not going to be getting the cash. The cash is going to be staying with uh, ZMDC because there was fears that this money will be stolen and Zanopi was, was now involved in this whole issue. So what they've done is that ZMDC is now going to be handling the money from the Chiazwa uh, Community Share Ownership Trust because of the fighting among the, the group, the Marange family, the Zanopi family, and also the MP was involved in this fight. So you can go in and check it out. Uh, it's all over the press. And then let's go and look at... Um, I want to quickly look at uh, other stories here. In community news, two UFIC members took each other to court, and that is uh, over a haulage truck. And if I remember of the UFIC, you know that this story has been going on since 2017. So that is Leslie Makosa is was taken to jail after he defrauded Frederick Ma Mauto of. 15,000 US dollars in 2017. So this has been out in and out of the court, UFIC. So no one managed to sort out this issue. Makosa is 29 years old and Mdara Mawoto is 50, 50 years old. And this has been dragging on since 20, 2017. Then in terms of international news, so let's look at what's happening internationally. Uh, in South Africa, there is someone called Marcus Just. So if you know Marcus Just, he is a billionaire uh, that is supposed to have died uh, last month, committed suicide. And people are now starting to question if he really died because the police are refusing to show his body. Uh, and people are saying, where is this guy? So you look at South African press, that is what is hot in South Africa. What is happening with the body of Marcus Hughes? Is he really dead? Uh, or they are faking his death? Uh, or maybe he's in witness protection or something like that. So speculation is very rife in South Africa re uh, regarding Marcus Just. Then Zimbabwean give more Mzinganyama.
came third in the Two Oceans Marathon in Cape Town this weekend, uh, done very well. Uh, and then the winner was Onalena Konkobe. He came in first. So Onalena Konkobe here came in number one in the Two Oceans Marathon of South Africa. So congratulations to our brother, uh, Give Mom Zinganyama. The prize money here was $250,000. So that's how much they got for this. And then I've got community announcements, uh, which is the Judicial Services Commission is appointing 10 judges of the High Court and one court of the Administrative Court. The India High Commission is issuing scholarships. So if you want scholarships uh, to go to India, you can look here. It's master's, doctorate, and postgraduate. Post you can go and check them out here. And then we've got other uh, scholarships. Let me look at what else is, is, is over here. We've got um, sports. Let's, let's look at sports. Uh, Highlanders for the first time uh, did not win. Uh, and I think that was a 1-1 one -one for Highlanders. So let me check what has happened to the league. So let's look at Simba Bora. He beat Dynamos. Dynamos is being beaten daily. Yada won for the first time. Check Gudu Pirates 2-1. Caps United draw. And then Arno Movers 2-2. The actual log standing is now looking like this. Let me show you what the log standing is looking like. So this is what it's looking like. Uh, Zimbabwe log is very interesting. At the top, we still have Highlanders with six played and four wins. Simba Bora, six wins and four wins. So at the top, we've got the usual top suspects. And then Yada is still at the bottom, but they now have a win. For the first time, Yada has a win. Dynamos is now in the relegation zone. So if as a Dynamos supporter, it's looking bad for you, my brothers. So look at the log. I'm going to upload this to gambago.com within the next 20 minutes, as soon as I finish here, so that you can see where the, uh, the log is looking like. But things looking very bad for Dynamos. For the first time, Dynamos could get relegated uh, from the league, for, from the PSO league. This has never happened. Uh, what, what we're seeing now, uh, Dynamos always manages to, to somehow get out of it. Then let's quickly look at H Metro. I want to see if H Metro is out. If not, if H Metro is not out, we're going to quickly wrap up here. And on H Metro, I'm going to display for you so that you can see what I'm looking at. H uh, Metro is got. Uh, they've published today. So let's share the screen so that you can look at H Metro. I'm not going to look at the whole newspaper. My brothers will fight me if I show you everything. I'll just show you the headlines. And uh, the story that they're leading with here is did, do Maititi's kids need foster care? Uh, Maititi is Felicitas Murata. So the child of Maititi, uh, the young Fifi, she has come out and certain pictures have been leaked of her. And I've offered my uh, to arrange counseling for her and the child uh, so that the child does not eventually get into bigger problems. But uh, this is something that needs to be addressed. Uh, we cannot just leave a child whose pictures have been leaked all over the world, the world at that age. I think she's 18 years for her to be going around. She needs counseling. And I think the, this is a valid question. Uh, but you can't put someone who's 18 years <laughs> foster care, I think. So maybe it's better to get them cancelling. And then we're leading with another story here. Uh, this story is on Gambako.com. The, the woman called um, uh, More Blessing. She's called More Blessing. She has killed her husband, Moses Mtukwa, in Cape Town. If you go to Gambako.com, you'll see the story. Uh, we published it yesterday. She banned him and he died in Cape Town. So she's being looked for, and that is the story that they have in the H Metro newspaper. So I'm not going to look at any other stories. Uh, this newspaper is quite small, so I don't want to read the whole newspaper for you. You, you have to buy the newspaper, otherwise the guys from H Metro will hate me for it. So I would like to thank you for watching. Uh, let's recap with the top story of the day. In fact, we've got two top stories of the day. The first story is that Nelson Chamisa, given the fact that there is going to be a new... Uh, dialogue taking place. Dialogue with Nangagwa and the CCC has started. That is what the CCC guys have said. And this was said by Ngobizu Tomlilo here, Ngobizu Tomlilo, last week. So dialogue has started, and I think Chamisa had to come out and clarify. So you, you can look here uh, at the um, uh, particular newspaper in the Daily News that that's what it was announced. The dialogue has started between ZANPF and the CCC, and they want to postpone the elections. This is a massive development. So Chamisa had to come out and clarify and say, uh, through Dubeko here, that is not working with any of these factions. ZANPF is in control of everyone in CCC. 
that is the Mkwananzi faction and the faction that is led by Senko Zuchabangu and the faction that is led by Nube. They are all under the control of uh, uh, CCC, of, of Zanupi, I'm sorry. So none of the CCC factions is working with Chamisa. That is what he said. And then we have the second story here, which is uh, Oxlam Nangaba has started the campaigns for her sons. So she wants either Collins or Emerson Jr. or Kuda uh, to take over as president after the departure of Nangaba. That is what I've heard. Uh, most likely Collins is going to be the one that they want to push. But if everything else fails, Oxila herself could be in the running to become the next president. But she's extremely unpopular. There's no one in Zimbabwe as unpopular as Oxila. Like uh, Oxila is so unpopular that she was booed by women uh, this weekend. Uh, I showed you this picture. No one wants what is happening in Zanupia. And no one wants the, the Mnangapa dynasty. But this is what they're planning. And it's well known in Zanupia. It's not me who's saying it. It's well known in Zanupia that Oxila is plotting, plotting something for his sons. And Collins was in Vic Falls with her here uh, yesterday. So this is a well-known thing that the Mnangagwa family, even if Mnangagwa was not to go for a third term, they are planning to put one of their own. But I don't think the boys are ready. Uh, the boys are not ready. I don't think they're capable of it. Uh, and it would be better to just let General Chuenga do his thing and take over his own payoff without a fight. Because if they keep on fighting, it will eventually become a big problem. Uh, so right now, they are still fighting. They are holding countrywide rallies there is no single day uh, that auxilia is not holding a rally she's holding a rally in one way or the other and in one form and the other and also the twins are giving away cars like crazy uh, with wikino so apparently the whole car issue is connected to the uh, this whole bit by um, this group or that want to take over is zimbabwe the, the Mnangaba group they are using the cars as a way of buying the musicians and also buying the celebrities so that eventually they have the youngsters, they have the women, they have the universities, and that is the long term strategy with the Mnangagwa family. But as I said, Chamisa wants dialogue, he wants a real ele election. That is where we are. That is where everything is, not this uh, Mnangagwa dynasty that they're trying to create here. So I, I really appreciate uh, talking to you every day. And uh, obviously, we are going to be continuing to, to proceed with what we're doing with publication and with growing our actual daily news. We want to increase the amount of stories that we're putting out. And I would like to urge you to join the Gambakwe YouTube channel. You pay a small amount to help us every month. If you just go to our YouTube, you click join and you, you pay an amount there. And eventually, our head office will be open. And when our head office is open, will be able to walk in and also be part of our, uh, our our business that we're running, our media business in Zimbabwe. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, and this is the craziest thing I've ever seen, uh, the mom that is campaigning for the sons every day. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. And if nothing big happens today, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. But if something big happens, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you very much.